Good morning and welcome to another day of devotion. Today, just before we get into the Word of God, please pray with me for a minute. Dear Father, thank you for this new day that you have made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your spirit that is present with us every day and at every hour to guide us, to lead us and to teach us. Dear Father, this day, your word says that your mercies are new as well as your steadfast love. And so this morning, Lord, we receive new love and new mercies. Lord, I pray that our testimonies for today are new and that the things that our hearts so earnestly desire, Lord, your word says you will grant us those desires if we put our trust in you. And therefore, we choose to put our trust in you, dear Father, in the name of Jesus. As we share your word this morning, I pray that your word will change our minds forever and our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So, this morning, I'd like us to speak on a really beautiful topic entitled, Overcome All Hurdles. And the focus here is to speak about the hurdles or hindrances that you will face as a Christian on your journey with God. Now, the truth is, no matter at what point you are with God, you're going to face these challenges. So, if they have not yet come, if you have not yet experienced them, just wait because they are coming. So, my goal today is to prepare you for that time when those hindrances show up. How will you handle them? The first hurdle you will face is the hurdle of your environment. If you're on your Christian journey, and if you're trying to grow with God, your environment will always seek to have an influence on you. Turn your Bibles very quickly with me to the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And the Bible says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God says, The world has a pattern. The world has a culture. The world has a system. He says, do not conform to it, but be transformed, be metamorphosed. And so when I speak about your environment, I'm really speaking about your exposure at three dimensions, your physical environment or exposure, your mental environment, and your spiritual environment. But mostly we will talk about your physical and your mental environment. What are the things that you are exposed to? If you live in a place where there are people who serve the Lord, you know, people who just have a deep passion for the Lord and a deep fire for the Lord, you will find that your Christian journey is facilitated. If you live in an environment that is full of sin, for example, I tell people there are places not to live in. If you're living in a neighborhood where there's prostitution, all forms of youthful lusts and reckless living, that is going to influence your life. And so the question is, what kind of environment are you exposed to? What kind of physical environment? How is the place where you live influencing your Christianity? If you live around a place where people play loud music and it just constantly gets into your spirit, that is going to influence your spiritual journey. What is your mental environment? What are the thoughts, beliefs, and mindsets that you've allowed to rest in your mind? What are the things that you have given room in your mind for? So, the things that you expose yourself to in terms of physical environment and mental environment have a really strong impact on you. And so this morning, God is asking you to beware of your environment to curate an environment that carries the atmosphere of God's presence. If your entire life you spend with colleagues and people in areas where there is no true faith and there is no regard for God, then this is going to influence you. And so God desires that we live in sane and sanctified environments. Sometimes, even the physical state of your surroundings, of your environment, even the sanitation has an influence on your relationship with God. What are you exposed to and how is it influencing your relationship with God? The second hurdle you must overcome, which is very linked to your environment, 
is your company. If you have any form of bad company, it will corrupt your character. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. If you hang around people who have no regard for God, if you spend your entire day around atheists and people who are not trying to develop their spiritual life, I can already tell you that it will pull you down. It's going to be a weight to you. It is a hurdle that you will not be able to jump over. It is important to surround yourself with people who are supportive, who will challenge you on your Christian journey. It's important to surround yourself with people who have the same mind. You see, the Bible says two are better than one because they have a better reward for their labor. So as you labor in trying to know God and to grow spiritually, if you surround yourself with the wrong people, it will pull you down. It will influence you. It will affect your mind. Rest assured that God wants you to live very differently and he wants you to surround yourself with godly people with people that will challenge you, with people that will change the way you live. So God wants to change you. There are several times in my Christian journey that I realized that there were things that I started doing basically because of the people that were around me. No matter how you call yourself an influencer, a peer leader, the one who controls the friends and not controlled by the friends, I can assure you if you live around people who are constantly using curse words or if you spend all of your time with people who have a certain kind of belief, rest assured you will share that belief much sooner than later. God wants you to curate your company. God wants you to be careful about the kind of people you, you walk with, the kind of people you spend your day with, the kind of people that you live with. If you give your company, if you spend time with people who are not godly, it will influence you. And so this morning, I pray that you will find the right people. The Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so does one sharpen another. What kind of person is sharpening you? Are you being sharpened or you're being rendered blunt? In your Christian journey, you need people that will challenge you. People that will open your eyes to see better. See, you must be among a huge number of people, not just one or two, but you must actually curate people above you, your peers and people that you're leading must be people that fear the Lord. Of course, you're going to work with certain people or you're going to have to spend time probably in your office or with the kind of work that you do or at school with people who don't fear God. And so you must intentionally curate your company. Hurdle number three, distractions. Now, when I speak about distractions, I'm talking about things that take your time, your attention, and your focus away from God. And there are several kinds of distractions in our generation. Everything seeks to take your attention. From the entertainment you give yourself to social media, worldly pursuits, the love of money, just even the love of friendship, anything that is taking your attention, your time or your focus away from God. Sleep can be a distraction. There are some people who sleep too much. Spending time with friends can be a distraction. My question is, what is that thing in your life that is taking your time, your attention and your focus away from God? Today, I want you to do a self-evaluation and to answer what is that thing taking your attention away from God. I want you to actually spend time and take notes. What is that thing? What is that thing that causes you not to spend ample time with God? Is it food? Is it sleep? Is it friends? Is it just hyperactivity? Is it ministry? For those of you who are Christians, sometimes you're too busy serving God that it has become a distraction. You're too busy serving God that you do not spend time with God. What is that thing exactly? Is it your work? Some people pray for jobs and then when the work comes, they have no time to spend with God. Is it a desire to be married? Is it a relationship? Is it a particular person in your life? If 
anything is taking your time, your attention and your focus away from God, that thing is a distraction. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Everything that hinders. Throw off. If it hinders you, throw it away. If it's influencing you, throw it away. If it's taking your time, attention and focus away from God, this would be a good time to let go of that thing. God wants you to live without distractions and he wants you to be intentional about the things that distract you because God wants to remain the centerpiece of your focus. God wants to remain the chief person, the most important thing that your mind focuses on, that you give your time and attention to. Therefore, you must take God into everything that you do. So lay aside every distraction. Hurdle number four, cares and troubles. You see, when it comes to cares and troubles, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Another version says, cast all your anxiety on him. For some people, your worry has become a hurdle. Your anxiety has become a hurdle. The things that you give your mind to that trouble you have become a hurdle. And I found out that sometimes the things that we are praying for, the things that we are worried about have consumed us so much that we can no longer hear God or relate with him apart from those things. There are certain people who are so worried about the circumstances of their lives that they are unable to hear the Lord. They are unable to spend time with God. So what do you care so much about? What troubles you so much? What are the burdens that you carry? What are the things that weigh you down? Is there any prayer topic that you have prayed for so many years, for so long that you can no longer spend time with God? What is that need that has taken an idol place in your heart? What is that thing that you want so badly, that thing that you fear so much that you can no longer just spend intimate time with the Lord? What is that thing? What is that thing that has taken your heart away from the Lord? In the parable of the sower, the Bible talks about the seed that was sown among thorns. And when Jesus explains that parable, he says that the seeds that are sown among thorns, the thorns refer to the cares and troubles of this life. And the Bible says it would choke the seed. Therefore, if the word of God has come to you and you are consumed by worry, rest assured that the worries and troubles and cares and anxiety of your life will choke the word. There are people who have been in church for several years, but they are unable to focus on God because they have this one need that they want God to, to meet. They have this one thing that they are praying for God to change in their lives, for God to provide. And for so many years, they have asked the Lord to provide, to meet that need, to change that thing to heal them of that disease they have spent so much time on that one trouble that they no longer have any regard for god they no longer care about god it has choked the seed of god's word in your heart you have prayed for something for so long and god is saying hold your peace i'm in charge now but you're unable because that thing has become an idol to you what is that need that has become an idol to you this morning, God is saying, no need to take my place in your heart. Lay it down at my feet and trust that I am the Lord. Trust me, says the Lord. So every care and trouble that you carry, this morning, God is saying, cast your care upon me because I care for you. Give me your anxieties. You can just say, Father, I lay down every anxiety. I lay down every worry, every trouble, every need that so badly consumes me, Lord. I lay it down at your feet and I choose to trust you. I choose to surrender to you in Jesus' name. Hurdle number five, knowledge and information. The knowledge and information you have will largely influence you. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the verses 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God 
and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, the kind of knowledge you have will influence you. The kind of information you have will influence your spiritual journey so powerfully. And I would like to talk about knowledge as programming. So the knowledge and information you have is the programming of your mind. There are some things that you will quickly adhere to. There are some things that make no sense, but you have come to accept them. For example, there are people who quote certain things that are not in scripture, but that knowledge influences them. For example, something like heaven helps those who help themselves. That's very powerful knowledge, but it's not in scripture. It's not even scriptural. If you could help yourself, then heaven will not help you. But heaven helped us because we could not help ourselves. That is in fact what gives God his glory and his power in your life. And I understand the premise of the statement. These are people who are trying to say, work hard according to the grace. They are trying to say, don't just, you know, pray without working. James says, show me your faith by your works. And that's another thing. But the way James puts it says, you already have the faith. You already trust that heaven is helping and therefore you work. You're not working so that heaven to help you. There are several programmings like this that influence us. Sometimes I hear people say things like, God forbid, and they will snap their fingers around their heads. So when somebody says something and that person says, God forbid, not me, and they snap their fingers or something like back to sender, what does that mean? You know, you can easily say something like back to sender and you believe that, you know, you have sent something back to the sender or you have made a proclamation, but some of these things are just programmings. They are responses, they are jargon. It's information that we have. We snap our fingers around our heads and we say back to sender. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. When somebody says something to you, your programming can quickly influence how you respond to circumstances. Your programming will tell you the kind of faith you will apply in any circumstance. What has God said to you and what is your programming causing you to do? Do you have knowledge of God's word and of the scriptures to respond to circumstances or do you respond based on what pop culture says and the people around you say? What is the programming that is influencing your spiritual journey? Are you given to the word? Do you have the word of God in your spirit? Do you know what the word of God says about each circumstance of your life? Your programming and the knowledge you have will influence your Christian race. If you have the wrong knowledge, I tell you that you're going to fall several times. Some people struggle with different things because they don't have the knowledge of how to deal with these things. When I talk about knowledge, I'm not just talking about biblical knowledge. I'm talking about scientific knowledge, practical knowledge. There are some things in your life that can end if you have the right practical knowledge. But you are reading only scriptures. So give yourself to learning. If you're learning the wrong things, it will influence your spiritual journey. Hallelujah. Hurdle number six, sin. We cannot talk about hurdles without talking about sin. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and run with perseverance the rays marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. So sin is a hurdle. To sin means to miss the mark, to go against God's command. What is that thing that God has commanded you not to do? To sin will mean to go against the Lord's instruction in disobedience. There was a time in scripture where God told Saul, King Saul, to go and defeat a land and kill every living thing. And the Bible says he left the best cows to offer a sacrifice to God. And that is in fact why the kingdom was torn away from him. And the prophet said to him that the Lord desires obedience more than sacrifice. If there's any sin that is lurking in your life, it's a hurdle. It has become a weight and God wants you to repent. To repent basically means to change your mind. God wants you to repent and to turn around, to turn from your ways and to serve the Lord. 
This morning, I pray that every sin, anything in your heart, every little white lie, every little thought that you hold, that you don't want to let go of, whatever you don't even believe is sin, I pray that you will have the courage to say, Father, forgive me for this sin, and you will change your mind. In Jesus' name. Hurdle number seven, and lastly, I'll talk about demonic operation or spiritual influence. You see, this life that we live is spiritual. I like to say life is 100% spiritual. And so, no matter what you do in overcoming all the hurdles, I want you to understand that the earth is a reactive realm. So, the earth is controlled by the heavens. Some people think that heaven is God's house. Heaven is his office of operation for earth. In other words, if you engage heaven, if anything is done in heaven, it will be done on earth. If any command is issued in heaven, it will be done on earth. So heaven is like the White House or the Unity Palace. It is the place from which God governs earth. The only reason why heaven was created was because there will be an earth. That's why even after the destruction of the earth, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And the word heaven doesn't only mean the place from which God operates. It also is the place from which demons operate. That's why the Bible talks about the heavens, the spiritual realm. And the word heaven specifically means the place from which the earth is influenced. No matter what you do, I want you to understand that the earth is influenced by the heavens. And so you have to engage the heavens. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, For we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. There are realms that control the earth. And you have to be very careful and conscious of the kind of atmosphere around you. And the way that you overcome any form of negative spiritual influence is by investing in spiritual disciplines. Prayer, fasting, praise, adoration to the Lord. You have to invest in spiritual disciplines, Bible study, meditating on the word, creating mental pictures, confessing the word, boldly proclaiming the word. And I tell you, this morning God wants you to overcome all hurdles so that you may run an effective spiritual race. Remember, hurdle number one, your environment, your physical or mental environment. Hurdle number two, your company. Hurdle number three, distractions. So anything that takes away your time, attention and focus from God. Hurdle number four, cares, troubles and worries. Hurdle number five, your knowledge and information. Hurdle number six, sin. And hurdle number seven, demonic operation or spiritual influence. This morning I pray for you that you will be conscious of the hurdles that you're facing in this season. Whatever particular hurdle you are facing in this season, I pray that your feet will be empowered to jump over and to overcome. I pray that you will be swift enough and full of grace to overcome every hurdle in the name of Jesus. I pray that your life will be successful in the end and you'll be able to say like Paul, I have run the race, I have finished my cause, I have kept the faith and I have fought the good fight of faith. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining in on today's meditation. I hope that you can actually take time to evaluate which hurdle you are currently facing and put in systems to overcome in the name of Jesus. It was amazing having you on today's meditation. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Goodbye.